Which is rise up, return to your power, which is rise up. Now is the hour, which is rise up, step up to your throne. Which is rise up, it's time to come home. Which is rise up, return to your power, which is rise up. Now is the hour, which is rise up, step up to your throne. Which is rise up, it's time to come home. We are the witches, we have returned. 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 The age of witches here now. 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 Witches rise up, return to your power. Witches rise up, now is the hour. Witches rise up, step up to your throne. Witches rise up, it's time to come home. Witches rise up, return to your power. Witches rise up, now is the hour. Witches rise up, step up to your throne. Witches rise up, it's time to come home. Hello everyone, welcome back to Witches Rise Up Global Online Summit, calling you witch to rise up and return to your power because we are the witches. Yes, we have returned and I'm your host, Emer Stassen, and I'm really excited to welcome today's expert speaker, Cheryl Prince. Hi, Cheryl. Hello. <laughs> Oh, that just made me so excited hearing witches rise up. I was like, yeah. Here we go again. Here we go. <laughs> and I'll say a few words about you, Cheryl, so people know. Cheryl is an actress, writer, 5D theatre maker, spiritual activist and intuitive healer. She's currently developing a trilogy of spiritual plays. Her first play, Awaken, delves into the witch persecution in the 17th century, highlighting the ripple effects this still has today. It calls into question the power that was stripped out of the hands of the witches and asks us to reclaim our innate wisdom. Yes. Awaken won runners-up in the Script Accelerator programme at the Park Theatre in London and is now in its final stages of development with Beacon Arts Centre in Scotland, where it will have an in-hand script reading in May 2022. Cheryl's passion is igniting magical realism into the modern world and birthing a spiritual voice within theatre. As a healer, she works with people to help them align their energetic body, realize their soul story and ignite their divine essence. Woo! <laughs> oh my goodness. And your topic today, Cheryl, is healing her story. Wow, wow, wow. And um, I must say before we dive in that we connected after last year's summit, after healing the witch wound, and I knew, you know, I knew that like once we connected, I knew your story. It's it is made for the stage, obviously, and that you know we had to connect and speak for this this summit. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. being here. It was so like synchronicities occur. It was so divine timing. I was just feeling like there wasn't anyone that was getting because last year was very much about witch wounding and I was like no one's getting it and I just submitted a poem about the witch thing um to a theatre and they just replied that minute to say right we're, we're, we're taking your poem and it was going online and I found your um 
healing the witch wound meditation about the summit and I was doing it and crying going somebody gets it this is amazing and then we connected and then I watched the whole of last year's witch wound summit and I thought oh my god my sisters this this does I've been there writing this play for four years and it was like I I was in in my gut going there's the community for this I'm writing it for a community but as a actress and performer that audience didn't exist. I wasn't seeing that voice on stage in theatre. I wasn't seeing those people. I wasn't seeing people go, hang on, we have to speak about the real spiritual heart of who we are as witches. And then finally, I found the witch summit. And I was like, oh, yeah, there's the tribe. <laughs> there's the tribe. <laughs> so yeah, I hope uh, it, these summits fill as much people up with that kind of community spirit that I know that we got taken from us um, so many years ago and we're all trying to reclaim back and I'm doing it through theatre but the summit's doing it through different connections. Um, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. so much excitement. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And then what has your story been then around awakening your witch? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to start with that? Yeah. <laughs> I think this is so important to start here because um, about four years ago when I started this journey, uh, people would people have said to me in the past sort of five or six years, oh, you're a witch. And I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. And then when I started to write the play, it was like, I'm not a witch, by the way. I'm writing a witch, but I'm not a witch. <laughs> now, the honest um, thing is that I like to let people know, because it's a very important part of the spiritual work that I do, is the reason I wrote about a witch play is because I had a past life regression by accident as I was training as a healer. And it was an eye to eye um, healing practice that we were doing. And I looked in this um, girl's eyes and I suddenly saw me hung as a witch on a tree. And I had no, no, no background of witches. I wasn't particularly interested in, in them. I didn't, they weren't in my consciousness. And, and suddenly I was like, what, what, what? And then I went through a little time of being quite interested as an actress to play a witch, because suddenly the fascination started. Didn't find that very satisfying because the, the, the stuff that's out there that's written about witches is not really about witches. <laughs> it's about kind of, um, the, the the time and maybe people were using herbs and things, but they didn't really go into what a, a proper witch was. Um, and they couldn't really because it's individual to you, uh, as you probably know as well, like everybody's witch is a different kind of witch. Yes. Um, and then so I started to kind of get the idea that I would have to write this story, but I did it as a closet witch. So I'd be like, okay, I'm playing this character and, you know, <laughs> and I'm saying this because I know so many people would do this be closet witches like yeah I'll go to a summit but I won't talk to anyone else about it or I'll go to a workshop or I'll do sort of I'll do a little bit of healing as a nurse but I won't tell anyone I'm doing you know I've seen it so many times on so many people I've, I've met and then people that I do one-to-one -one healings with that I'm like we're going to go into your witch's past. And I know that and I don't tell them and then they pull out this past life and they didn't even realise they had a witch history. So I'll premise that with that's what I was doing. And then I had a reading of my play a few years ago and somebody in the audience said to me, and what gives you the right to talk about um, this whole witch history? And I just turned around and thought, enough's enough. And I just said to them, because I was killed as a witch in my past life, so I can talk about it. And ever since then, I was like, right, I'm out of the closet now. I've kind of very much approached my work that I will not do myself the injustice of not talking about the beyond the play, the reality of what it is to be um, a witchy woman, the reality of the persecution, and also um, who who I am, which is um, a very spiritual person, which means I tap in, I speak to. Um, loved ones that have passed on. I'm a healer, so I work in the energetic realm. I've got one foot in this reality and another in another one. And that is the true witch. And I'm just very grateful that they pushed me into telling this story because it was my awakening. 
and that's why it's called Awaken because yeah it was my big <sighs> okay I am a witch fine all right then amazing amazing gosh I'm just getting chills all over here yeah, me too. <laughs> sharing all of that and that that moment where you were receiving that healing and in the other person's eyes you saw that you saw that life what um what difference did it make I know you spoke about this opening this this whole new way for you but I wonder was it did it feel like it was re-traumatizing or was it like a whole release and you know beautiful because that's exactly it when I when I had the the past life regression because it was meant to be a Reiki healing um so it's just so other people were feeling colors and feeling energy move and I was like oh, I've just been hung as a witch and I said it to everyone and they were like oh but I didn't I felt because if anyone's had past life regression before um you'll know that it doesn't feel like the it feels vivid it's stuff that you don't have any awareness of and you're just there and everything's so clear and sensical it's like a different reality um and so i just was in awe of it because what i now realized that i didn't know at the time is when you've had trauma um and you know this is this is what the body does it jumps your body jumps away so you, basically shamanically you've got soul loss so your soul will go okay i'm coming out of the body and i will witness this so in a more um less kind of um a cult way of describing it i've been beaten up uh, and when that happened i literally only ever saw that trauma from the outside looking at myself being beaten up until i integrated that trauma and then i could look at it from the inside and that was the journey of writing the play that it's so important and so why i do a lot of work with artists spiritual creatives because I went through that trauma alone. Um, oh, it's, it's quite upsetting. Um, so I went through having to live through what it was like to be to 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 be in the body of that very brutal murder. Because we've got to we've got to acknowledge that witches were tortured horrifically. Their deaths were horrible. I mean, is there a worse thing to do to a body than hang it or burn it? or stick things in it you know it's like it's brutal and going through that and I, I went to the witchcraft museum in Tintagel which is a stunning place and then really found out about the length of the killer and so basically I was reliving this old part and getting more and more closer to my body and then I realized I couldn't write the hanging scene in my own play I was like I just can't write it I kept making it I was just doing everything I could, but not to write it. And then I sat down with myself and I thought, you're a healer, so heal it. And I actually got in my body and I experienced it and I sobbed and I felt like I was choking and I was just purging it. And what I was gently doing was, was calling in that soul part that had been lost all that time uh, back into my body, which is kind of how I work with people as a healer, like get your soul like back if it's ready to be healed. Um, and then what happens is the other side of that trauma is the true reason I believe the witches were killed because in their full soul light, their strength as a magical practitioner, as a wise woman, they are powerful. So I got that back to facing the trauma. And I, I want to say that because there was no forum or people I could speak to about going through that trauma at that time I went through it alone and there was no validation or witnessing apart from me that you know past life trauma exists it lives in us and we need to start recognizing it and validating it because then you know what happened in the past can't be fully healed if we don't go this really happened and it really happened to us it's not just the grandmothers that you it's us it's in our bodies. We, we were killed. So get our soul light back and start living the life that they didn't get to have today. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Which is um, 
Yeah, I've experienced this. I've seen, I've witnessed you calling this light back on behalf of others in witchy circle. And I've experienced it for myself as well in one-on-one work, one -on -one work with you. And uh, it's been incredible. We visited three different past lives for me. And ultimately it was um, what I connected with on the other side of that trauma was actually peace, this beautiful, tranquil inner peace that I hadn't experienced that depth of or consciously noticed it within me for a long, long time. Mm. And I would say from outside, your voice in this summit is completely different from the last one. Yeah. It's like completely, and that's what that's kind of the easier way to describe what soul lights back. It's like suddenly you get this strength isn't even the right word. It's like when there's it's like this power is a better word. But power we we know has been corrupted. So I mean pure source power in the in a really nice way. And I, I and and it was great because I took I came to your workshop. I don't know when you did it, but and we ended up doing that kind of channeling within the workshop, which was an idea I'd had um, to work with the audience when they came and see the play that we would be calling in the soul light of everyone there, which is to me 5D theatre, bringing it onto the next level. And I hadn't really spoken to anyone about this. <laughs> and then you were like, Cheryl, I feel like there's something you need to do. And I was like, oh. No, 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 not me, no. <laughs> and then I was like, and then I stopped for a minute, heard spirit speak, and I was like, okay, let's go. And then that's what came out of it. And, and that's what I love about witchy collaboration, because it was like the witches wouldn't let me get away with that. They were like, no, Emma's listening. Well, we're, we're all going to make you do it. And it was so beautifully powerful and it was so wonderful, because then I, I saw the women that were in that workshop, all of us, and I, you know, I've seen you before and how many witches and spirits are behind you willing your work on. And then it was like they, they were all around everyone and they're so present with us. And when I left that workshop, I released the, the trauma of the pain of them to, to going, why am I not working with them? Because they're so powerful. Why am I not calling them in constantly and going, where, where do you want the play to go next? Which people do you want to call in? You know, why am I not listening to them? And now um, the ending of my work's evolved because it will be like a seance um, where they all speak. I don't know what they want to say yet um, because part of what I'm doing, um, and it's a, it's a good time to kind of say to the community of witches that I'm very much wanting to collate these voices, but not collate them on the um, uh, research level, on a channeled level. So if witches are coming through and to speak to you about your past, write it down, get it written down, because I'm collecting those voices so that they can all speak through the work and, and just create awareness that the true witches that are coming back are the ones that remember this history in their soul mm -hmm. rather than in our history books, which... You know, <laughs> I'm not sure are particularly true. I think we're in a time where we're starting to rewrite uh, her story and looking at, at what's correct and what's not. And it's, so it's important for me to get my story out. But what I realised was it was actually this story so big with nine million reported as kill witches. And it's not it's not the research academic that's going to get it all out. It's going to be the soul stories of people speaking. Amazing. I can feel the power of that, of the work that you are inviting through you and inviting through others and other voices as well. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was, again, it tends to be my sister that gives me a nudge because she was the one that was like, oh, if you don't really like the acting world or, or there's no stories, then why don't you write your own? And I was like, what? <laughs> and then she went, and then you just did it. She was like, I didn't think you could do that. And I didn't get Arts Council funding four times for this play. Uh, it was like a bit of a joke because it, it was like all these artists I was re recommending funding to, I was the last one to get it. And the third time I was up, I'm up my sister's now, um, and I was up last time when I didn't get it, and I was up when I did get it as well. So there's something about 
Anyway, we went out for a walk and she said, are you not getting funded because you've not realized what the true story is? And she said, think about it like Schindler's List. Right at the end of the film, you realize it didn't just affect that one person. It affected all these people. And just as she said that, this flock of birds just flew overhead in a big, massive crowd together. And I looked up and I was like, oh yeah, it's just not my story, is it? It's so many people. And she went, you do that and that's your play. And since then it changed and then I got funded and then, yeah, it went like that. So yeah, <laughs> if, if I could say to any person out there, you know, if you can think that you're quite witchy and you do trust divine timing, but do you really, because we're humans? And I was like, oh, why, why? <laughs> But actually, it was so divinely timed, it was just me fighting against against it. So, yeah, don't do that to yourself. You can help it. And we do, don't we, as humans? And it's that patience as well. <laughs> it's yeah. like, be patient and trust. And I've got this timeline over here I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It shouldn't have happened, but now, what? well, I'm not going to do it. Oh, yeah, I went through so much, um, yeah, resistance and, and battle with it. Um, but because I'm writing a trilogy, I'm hoping that I've learned a lot of the lessons to make it a bit, a bit more smoother is in, in allowing the flow because channeling your work's my big thing. And actually it's, it's so much easier when we work with that divine feminine essence. I mean, you might even find it with the witch summit that when you just let yourself channel through what needs to come through rather than plan, 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 it's like, I mean, planning's good. We all need a plan, but then to let that go, <laughs> let something bigger come through. It's, yeah. it's so it's so true. And I knew after, well, after the summit last year, actually, no, I didn't know because after the <laughs> summit last year, I was like, okay, that's it done. We no, were done. We were you done. Me about, you were like, well, <laughs> when we had a one to one, and yeah. You know, yeah, I think I've just done that, and I think I said, you know, I don't think you have. Yeah. No, that's yeah. it. The witches now. You can you can go now. Rise up, off you go. And then still, it was like no, no. There's something more you have to do with this. So really, for the whole past year, to be honest, I've kind of still been walking with this. And when's it gonna be? When's it gonna be? <laughs> so yeah, this is it now. And absolutely, the energy then becomes once you to you make the commitment. And then begin to trust then the energy that comes through is yeah. amazing amazing yeah. and sometimes it's just before you know when you're going to go live or you're going to do the thing so yeah. it really does take a, a trust and possibly a backup plan too <laughs> <laughs> what's the backup plan sing sing and dance <laughs> i think you can say like i did um I was just saying, you know, basically, it was going in a new direction with my work that I don't don't want to go into, and I say it because only these past three months, let's say, I've started to call myself a spiritual activist, and I've never that that was new. That came at the end of uh, lockdown. It came of the second play being such a dark night of the soul society in society that I was like, oh my god, everything's. A, a lie that I've been sold. I kind of red pilled myself from the matrix and was like, I've lost faith there. <laughs> oh my God, how did I not see this all before? And then I, then I realized that, and I think that's what's really important not to, to go away with the, the love and light side of spirituality, that it's not just that, it's, you know, really awakening to, to the dark and the shadow and coming through that the other side, because you can't, I mean, I wanted that when I first trained as a healer. I was like, oh, this is amazing. You can work with angels. And I was such a, a fairy-like being. I was like, wow, yeah, I was such a magical kid that it was like, oh, my God, magic's real. And I loved it. And then I did shamanism. And I kept thinking, hmm, this is a bit dark and earthy. I don't like this. Go away. I'll just do the angel stuff. And then then kind of realize you get a little bit wiser or maybe you get a you know your soul really wakes up and then you go oh, okay and I think that's quite an important part of of witches um that we are the the side of which that I know we are spiritual activists and that's why they got killed 
because a lot of them wouldn't stay silent about what they know. And I'm one of them. <laughs> and it, there's, a, there's a line that it says, you can stop my mouth this day, but I will come back to Kant again. And mark my words, I am. So I say Kant uh, because it's an old kind of, um, it's an old term that predates Cockney. And Kant means to speak. And I was like, oh, it's just a beautiful language um, that's in, in Awaken at the moment. But I think, I don't know, it's just so important to, for witches to realise that they are spiritual activists as well, because a, a hell of a lot of us are. Amazing, amazing. There's so many questions I want to ask. Um, firstly, would you like to share with the audience how you do channel your work through 5D stories and what 5D theatre is? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favourite thing. There. Um, yeah, so 5D theatre only started about uh, a year ago. And it was because, so I work with a lot of um, creatives to to channel their work because it feels like that there's this kind of paradigm of, of working um, as an artist, as a writer, same, same as an actor. So it kind of happened to me through a rehearsal process where I was going, okay, if I'm going to write a story about witches, then surely it has to be slightly magical in nature. And I don't mean going away and um, making up like hocus pocus magic. I mean, using those practices and seeing what comes out of the process. So I would bring shamanic drums in and make people like journey into character and go into their soul selves and figure out who they were on a different dimension, which is 5D reality. I didn't know I was doing it that at the time. And then more and more like characters and work were coming out of it. And, and I, was, I was training as a healer at the time. So I was bringing my healing practices into the rehearsal room and kind of, now I've, I've realized that out there now there's like 3D storytelling, which would be um, go away, uh, do some research online, figure out your story, develop a character in different stages, ask character questions, structure a plot, blah, blah, blah. Okay, useful, useful. I had to learn that myself because I was such a channeler <laughs> that I needed the, the bones of the story. But then there's a 4D storyteller that's like a kid. And they just, I was like one myself, they can make up stories out of anything. And they naturally riff like a shaman would around a fire. They just make up these exciting stories and they know when they're losing you because they're great at attention. So they're there, like speaking from the heart and the emotions. And that's like 4D, that's quite magical. But 5D is going, hang on, I'm going to tell stories that, probably have been in those temples that got burnt or in those women's bodies that got hung. I'm going to tell stories that are really from the soul. And by doing that, you go, okay, so am I speaking with my soul? So there's the soul work if you're, I mean, not already doing a real soul connection with yourself. And it's getting really quiet and calling in the spiritual guidance that you've, you've got all around you. Because if you want um witches to tell their story call in the witches that were gone call in those spirits if that's the way that you work if you work as a shaman get your drums out and ask for the answers to your question if you work as an energy healer clear out all your chakras and then get yourself clear source and then what happens is so profound the synchronicities and the stuff that comes in as a clear channel and that to me is 5d storytelling and that's what i I teach people, I'm like, we, we can do this. And I don't know why people haven't talked about this, possibly, because I think people think too much that artists are geniuses. Or, you know, that it, uh, somebody can do it and I can't. But the true geniuses that I know are people that just channeled source and it came easy. That was the magical elixir that people are missing. They're just channeling source. They're not more smart than you. They're more, more, more creative. They're not more talented. They're just channeling source. So did I answer everything on that one? Because I feel like- I'm Yeah, there's so much. There's so much there. And when you speak of just channeling source- I know, I should have. <laughs> 
yeah, just you know, the just the hardest thing and the most simplest thing. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and that is it. I feel that it's it is that calling back to that simplicity, but it apps it's not simplistic. No, and it's that no. magical elixir that you speak of. It's beautiful, beautiful, and I, I guess um. No, I, I know it's the fear, you know, that fear is still, can still be present. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's magical but you said you taught the light and dark and then you said, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so what was coming in then as I was trying to keep a clear channel was the fact that it's, it, you do open your channel when it's clear and then what comes in you might not like <laughs> so I um very much had this only yesterday where I was like oh okay um I feel like I'm missing a point of the occult um and you know what why the witch thing happened because that's what I really want the answer for and then I was looking it up and I thought okay so King James rewrote the bible so the the original bible I'm assuming if it came from Jesus, I mean, I don't know where the original, but the original word was pure. And then it got propaganda, got filled through its brains. And then, you know, it's a fact that King James rewrote the Bible and he was the person that put in thou shall not suffer a witch to live. So I kind of thought, why, why would he do that? And I was under the impression that, you know, he just hated witches and it was this supernatural thing for a long time. And then spirit kind of went to me, Freemason, look at the Freemasons. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to look into this side of it. You know, there's a dark history between witches, Knights Templar. If, you know, I'll, I'll let everybody do their own research because it's going to take you down a massive rabbit hole. But of, of there being like magical men that supported uh, the kind of witches, and I mean, the older witches to go even on to Mary Magdalene and down to our ancient Egyptian temples, priestesses, same lineage. And then there's the kind of Freemasons that took the knowledge, the gnosis, the occult, and buried it underground. And by putting it underground, you mean that it's not there for everyone to see. It's not there to be held accountable for the darkness, and it's not there to be stopped. But the clever thing is, if you put it underground and pretend that it doesn't exist, that part of the occult, there isn't people out there worshipping Satan, there isn't people doing very dark things in the name of magic, then you, you let them get away with it because people don't believe in magic. So this was part of the awakening and the awareness that I was having that magic is truly in the hands of the practitioner. So you can heal, but you can harm. And that was the uncovering of the true witch persecution that unfortunately I feel, no, I know, that the healers and the, the light workers and the true witches that were helping the community and doing the good work were the ones that were killed. Whereas the ones that went underground and that were in power, that were rewriting things, very dark things and getting them killed, had the same magic in their hands, but were using it for very destructive forces. And I don't think that that's gone away. I mean, history has a tendency of repeating itself. So just look. <laughs> and I am, you know, th this is my second play, but it's also in the first one. So, yeah, I think the real reason that the witches were, were so, they were so powerful and they were um, persecuted because of it. So there will be that fear in you for being a witch. You would have been um, killed for this magic. And it's very brutal how, how they were killing. That's, that's not a normal blip in history. You know, it's, it's not normal to use that level of torture on people. That's, that's not right. And that's not gone away. And that needs to be held accountable. Uh, my play finishes in the court. So I'm still working out how I'm going to bring it to a judicial system to to bring this to light today um but i think it's important that we look at it it's not nice <laughs> it's really not nice but 
if you don't dare to look, then it will stay as a secret society and it will probably stop you using your gifts because there's a fear around them that it's wrong um, and there's a fear around it that um, you might get in trouble, you might get harmed. There's a fear around speaking your truth and that fear is real. But I, for what, you know, I feel so strongly about the lives that were lost and the fact that, you know, it's a, it's a political, we're in a spiritual war right now very clearly in a spiritual war. You know, there's not many spiritual people that don't know, know it. So, you know, I don't think we've even got time to get into that one today. But let's say we're in this spiritual war. Now, at the time when witches were practicing, they were cunning folk of the 17th century uh, in, you know, in, in England and Scotland, that's what they were called. There was a law that came into place because of the enlightenment period that they couldn't practice anymore, that you had to get certificates and you had to be trained as a doctor, a trained as a physician, they were called. So suddenly, all these people that were practicing for however long were put out of business. Karma repeats itself. Um, they, they were basically driven out because they couldn't practice. But the practices that they were using, some of the, the midwife, the early witches and all of them, they're still in medicine today but taken out and put into much more chemical uh, means like, um, you know, different antibiotics and stuff. It was a witch that made the first antibiotic with herbs, you know, where's that recognized? So there's a real dark agenda going on and that the, the witches were subject to. So I guess I want to say, even though it's scary and don't get me wrong, I was out there walking the dog yesterday going, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to, I don't want to. And I was like, you got and I was like well you better send me a sign then and I did I got sent a really big loud sign when I got in and I think you know I will speak about it but it takes a lot of us to keep speaking and to keep delving into our own soul story and coming out and being a community and a collective to really heal what the witch persecution did because we've only touched the surface at the moment yeah. Yeah. I've heard you say those words before as well. We've only touched the surface and it, it does feel that. And it also feels this is why it takes people like you creating these awakening plays in a 5D way to um, that will support others to rise up as well and know, get to know their witchiness, get to know our witchiness. Yeah. Yeah. And it does, I think, and that's the thing. I, when I was going through the journey, it was like, it was so, it was quite, it was so lonely and full of solitude. And I don't think that's it. And I, I guess when I got through it, I realized what was happening was so that I did speak about it. That, I, you know, if anyone came and saw the plays and started to have an awakening, that it was a community. And actually, I wasn't going to leave anyone high and dry. And if it, triggered something or awakened something or actually made them go oh my god I've got that spiritual superpower I do that and that's happened a lot along the way too where people have gone oh I do that and they didn't even realize that that's kind of a, a witchy power that we are all born with a sixth sense the kind out loud why are we taught that there's five when the sixth sense is the most important and that is like bringing that awareness into my work, as well as the, the darkness, I guess it's the light that's also in there, that it's like, this is, what, this is what you have access to. And it's that strong and powerful that it has been stripped from you, it has been taken, and it has been silenced throughout all of our, her story, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's so powerful, and I really do believe that, um, yeah, I was kind of forced to do the work. <laughs> begrudgingly out of my closet trying to be comfortable just because I was like this doesn't exist there isn't a 5d theater and actually you know we've got to do something new here and we've got to do it with a with a healer's knowledge because so that we can have it being um held and supported and I think that's the same in the work that you do it was like you can't do a witch summit without being a, a lived in witch that's connected to her soul. So then it, it enables other people to start 
being a catalyst and feel supported and feel that they can speak out and they can look at this stuff and that they can really step into that sixth sense, whatever it is for them and go out in the world and, and do that. Cause that's how we're allowing the witches to live today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the waves and energy of support is immense when we begin to really stand in our power and know, know this power. Yeah. Get and to I know think, it again. And I think the, mo- the important thing is to say on that, uh, it's just coming through as well, um, it's because I got very into what a, a witch was for me uh, because it was more about the witch that I found in myself and I found right at the start was the, the woman that could speak to dead loved ones, ones that passed on. And I say this because I wrote that I had an awakening about six years ago where my nan, who I'd lost um, about five years before in spirit, um, came back to me. And I saw her as I was in an acting class um, doing an exercise with my hands, which now I realize is light language channeling. She came to me, appeared to me as a beautiful bright light. um, And she said don't be so afraid and it was just this beautiful profound experience and I was like oh my god I've been living a lie spirit is here um and I got it reconfirmed with with someone who who heard the same thing in the room the next day and it kind of changed my life from then and so I began my play that way that this um witch woman her his spirit and says we don't need to be so afraid anymore no one's ever really gone no loved one's ever lost and because she's preaching this stuff, the priest is saying to her, no, they're channeling the devil. That's devil's work. That's devil's work. And she's going, but how can it be? I can tell everyone there's no death. Um, and then she yeah, doesn't end well for her. And then I was like, God, that was the witch I was because it's happening to me today. So I want to remind people that actually you don't, always need to search in the past for your witch it'll be those things that are naturally coming up to you but society's kind of taught you that's not really how it is or don't really use that and they're already there the nugget for the type of witch you'll be will be that super skill that you have that comes so naturally and then I was like god hang on so if I can speak to you know any spirit that I want I'll just speak to the witches directly and ask them to t- tell me what story come up, you know, answer in. My, I realised on this journey that my great-grandfather was a really famous medium. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God, come in, come and help me. Come and help me get this story out, the real story of these spiritual folk, because I think that's, that's the real harm that's been done, the witch persecution we face today. And there's, there's a big quite dark agenda witch persecution but there's also the more subtle one whereas if you look on wikipedia for quite a few of these witch names so look on it for cecil husk for starters my great grandfather it just talks about him being a fraud then you go into the spirit then you really do your research and you realize how that he was channeling king jai he was all these people have reported what he did in his channelings and how powerful he was and that at his, on his last days, he was cared for by the community because they thought so highly of him because he was going blind, he didn't have money and everyone just looked out for him. That's not a sign of somebody that was a fraud. Joan Peterson, a really famous cunning woman um, in East London, she was hung for being a witch, but they just say that she bewitched someone. And then you go back into the court cases and she basically they'd set her up to try and bribe her to speak about another woman and um, she wouldn't do it and they basically got her for it and it's all there but if you look on wikipedia it's all hidden now that's witch persecution right there yes. then you know halloween witch persecution why are you going around mocking a persecuted people that's it's got to stop it's got to stop it's like it's not you know, and all I ever hear is like, ding dong, the witch is dead, witch or witch, the witch is, it's a, it's a, you know, a, what, a Disney song made up? It's like, no, 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 it's the persecuted people. And you've got to pack that in and start recognising the persecution because when you don't see it, you live with it. And it means the little children, like I have two beautiful nieces that, you know, now they're educated because my sister would be like, no, 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 that ain't witches. 
you want to speak to your auntie Sharon about that? No, no, that's not what witches do. And it's like, you know, this re-education that we've really got to come into. And I think it's why we're, a lot of us start as closet witches, because we don't realise that we've suffered from the propaganda of, you know, I mean, my mum, bless her, used to say to me when she dyed her hair black, oh, I look like a witch. So I grew up, you know, when people said to me, oh, you're a witch. Oh, I look like a witch. I didn't even know that. Oh, oh, but now it's like, you look like a witch. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> it, took, you know, it took quite a lot of deprogramming to get there. And if we don't yeah. see it on a wide society, then we are persecuting it. And, you know, just take a look in your dictionary about the definition. Starters, it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, this conditioning, it's its a continuous deconditioning, all of that. And one of our speakers will speak of Lilith as the first witch or one of the first witches. That's, that's <laughs> the name of my character in the second play, Lily, uh, who has this character, yeah, because of oh, Lilith. I'm going to get so much out of this summer. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, there's so much going through. Honestly, it's like tingles and uh, shivers all over. Um, I guess, yeah, my question now is how then do we heal her story and embrace all that we are as yeah. humans here now, specifically at this time? Mm. Big question. Yeah. So I think it's... so few things. Um, I, I recorded a, a, a meditation for this summit, um, which addresses kind of the dark side of witches and the light side of witches. And I think that why I was doing it is because where, wherever you are on the spiritual journey, you can feel into one more than the other one would be like pushed away, like your power, or the fact that you've been hurt by it. And that was just an offering to start going, well, let's see what comes up to you. Because wherever people are, it's, it's, it, it matters to where you are. So if you don't have any recollection, you're just a bit curious like I was, like, oh, go to a witch summit, but I'm not a witch. I mean, there'll be people <laughs> that, that are there. And then that's don't the- tell anyone I'm here. Yeah. It's kind of like that, like. <laughs> and the invitation is to feel into it through a meditation like that, or to, to start to go through a few things and see what's pulling you. And it will be naturally, I, I believe, spirit gently showing you things and, and do go with a questioning mind. I mean, if I've learned anything on this long journey, go with it. Why do I feel like that? And, oh, well, hang on, hang on. Another level, um, the next level is, is very much, um, you know, if you are a healer and you're doing this work, do this work on yourself and you'll know how to. Or if you're not, go to a healer. This is why we do this kind of work. Um, whatever kind of resonates with you, find out your past life you know, go and journey. I will also be offering, so if people want to get in touch with me, I will be collating those stories and guiding people on a shamanic journey to find that like a, a soul retrieval. And um, so I will be offering that at some point. So um, do get in touch if you're curious, because a way that you can get it out of you is, is through writing it. Um, and then by all means, you can send it and have it, um, you know, part of the collective. Or if you decide to keep that for yourself, that's another journey because it's a very personal journey. And then I think on a on an even bigger collective of how we heal it, and it's why I'm doing uh, the play and the and the talk about the spiritual matters around the play, is that we um, really really look at it and start all speaking out in our, in our own way. And that could be quite small, like. Um, Please don't disrespect witches. I mean, I have a friend that knew how much witches meant to me, and so she started to correct people. No, 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 don't. That she went to a tour in Edinburgh, I think it was, and they were all like making money out of, oh, this is where the witches are, and they were being quite disrespectful. And the tour, she was like, I don't think that's very fair. I have a friend that's about this cause, and that's not right. So you can do it in small ways to start re-educating people. Eventually, we might get. It changed in the dictionary and, you know, who knows what we can do when we all go together. But I think it's about, you know, speaking out and stepping into whatever 
which skill that you had, whether it was clear audience, clear sentence, or clear vision, clear hearing, um, clear knowing in your body, whatever sixth sense. Um, you know, some people's are smells, just really take a little bit of time to go, hang on, have I got a sixth sense that I'm pushing away because, you know, my family didn't know what to do with me or um, I, I was, I will say this because it's just come into my mind now, but, you know, there are sort of seven countries still in the world that are killing witches today. So it's not, you know, it's still very rife. And there was a woman that I sat next to um, when I was in Africa and we were chatting and she said, for some, somehow my play came up and she said, yeah, I go and see, my family make me see the priest because I see spirits and they're trying to get the devil out of me. And I went, what? It's funny that you should speak to me because I'm writing a play about that thing in the 17th century. Can't believe it still happens today. I said, what if I said to you that the very thing you were speaking to was your gift? And she just started to sob. Mm -hmm. So the thing that they're telling you that's the devil in you is your gift. I was like, God, you know, to speak to spirit that easily, to see that, you know, you, you've got a gift. Um, so it's that, I think the, the biggest healing we can do on the world is on ourselves, and however we're pushing that witchy gift away. And um, so many of us will be for whatever reason, whether it's a past life, a, a family thing, a society thing, um, use your gift, use your gift because the world really needs you right now. Yes. Wow. So, so powerful. Gosh, thank you so, so much. And I honestly, I highly recommend that people connect with Cheryl and your work, your one-on-one -on -one oh, yeah. work. Your, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So I was going to say anything else you want to share? Yes. yes. So if you do want to connect with the work, yes. I very much. Um, so I've got a reading um, with Beacon Arts Centre in Scotland where, um, yeah, so much witchy history and my own history um, pulled me there, um, which will be um, a free online reading um, of the play when it's finally finished, the version that I'm happy with, and then we'll get it into theatres. But if people from this community want to come and hear that play, I will be sending out the, um, just sign up the main list, um, then let me know and I will be sending out because I very much am speaking to this community that doesn't have their voice in theatre. And I feel so strongly that we're represented, but also that to know how the work lands on, on these people, because I think we're moving into a time where do, you know, do we just see a show or do we engage with it more? Like, do we do we have healing circles after things, if things have been brought up? Do we um, do we go into it more? Because the play is not for the play is for an awakening for all. So, you know, it's, 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 um, it's for the witch community. Uh, so I'm not just, yes, just an artist that's writing a witch play because I'm interested in the subject matter. I'm writing for this very community. So, yeah, uh, I'd love to hear, um, yeah, what that, what that does and what awakenings that causes. And, you know, and yeah, <laughs> let's all get this new enlightenment together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I can just feel the ripples and I can see the ripples of, of all yeah. that you're doing going around the, the cosmos. That's yeah. so, so powerful, so healing. And uh, maybe we'll get to meet when you come to oh, you, God, you yeah. physically coming up, yeah, to Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I will right. be. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And also, if you're uh, writing a, a little witchy story too, let me know. So. I'm sure they keep coming out of you. So, it just yeah. continues. Yeah, I know. And it, it does. It's funny because I'm um, working with um, in Invercip, uh, which is where Beacon Art Centre is, and the witch history that's come out of there since I've been talking to them. I was like, whoa. I mean, it was like 80 um, witch killings there, which is really high for a very small place. And then I found out there was this minister um, that was just – doing all sorts of bad things and it's not really out there in the community so I was like okay you sent me up there for a reason I'm like yeah. uncover the truth uncover the truth yeah. so yeah I'm really looking forward to trying to um, work with some people in the community to, to find out their history that they might not have known as well so um yeah wherever I go I'm like 
where's the witch history that's been buried? Where are you? Let's get it on. <laughs> This is it. It's coming out of the ground, out of the land, the earth. You know. yeah, yeah. yeah. And thank you, uh, you know, for the part that you do in this cause. I mean, it just fills me with joy that you exist and you do these summits and that you heard the call and just did it. Yeah. yeah. And this is the persistence of the witches. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> I felt I had to, you know, as scary as it has felt. Um, I have to and we are supported that's mm. yeah wow thank you so much Cheryl for all that you've shared and I know we could talk and talk for <laughs> ages. and um yeah for everyone listening all the links to connect with Cheryl and her free gift um, is will be below this video and do please connect with Cheryl get on her list as well and um, yeah, we'll see you all soon for the next talk. Thank you. Thank you. Witches, we are rising, rising, rising. Witches, we are rising in the 21st century. Thank you for inviting your witch out to play today.